Haru is a plural trans person, or rather, Haru is one of the plurals in the system. I recommend, by the way, that anyone who is capable of seeing a specialist should make that attempt. Uh, it's just that I had no, uh, it's just I couldn't afford it. You could basically say that we're uh, 15 dragons in a trench coat. Do you know all their names? So there's Ali, Audrey, Bronwyn, Cassia, Evan, Florius, Lilith, Lanier, Rin, Rowana, Shylin, um, Spirit, Tama, Yang. Did I forget anyone? I'm okay. I'm gonna be real with you guys. I have a little bit of THC in my system, as well as a little bit of alcohol. Okay, I'm just letting you know. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Uh, pretty wonderfully. Awesome. Okay, welcome to the stream. Who am I speaking with? Haru. Haru? Okay. Nice to meet you, Haru. So, we've been interacting on Twitter for ages. Um, but as uh, I've been told, you are a plural trans woman. Is that correct? Uh -huh. What does that yeah. mean? Um, so, the plurality part means that I am a... Well, we are a system. There are, we don't necessarily call ourselves alternate personalities. We see ourselves um, each as different people. We're capable of interacting with each other. Um, we have a lot of like deals and arrangements for how we all work together. And you could basically say that we're uh, 15 dragons in a trench coat, pretending 15. to be a normal human being. Okay. Which one of your um, alters is the strangest one, you think? And which one's the most normal one? All right, let's... Well, the first part is easy. That That is like Shylin in a heartbeat. Um, huh. Sh Shylin is like the craziest fucking energy. Um, which one's the most normal? That is a... You know what? Actually, I'd say Evan, probably. Okay. Uh, were you always plural or like, how did you discover this? Um, it started developing around 18 or 19. The first other person in the system I was able to talk to was Cassia. Sorry. Um, I'm loud. Um, Cassia. Okay. And what was that like when you met Cassia? Uh, I didn't believe she existed and um, kept trying to convince myself that she did not. Uh, I thought I was like losing my mind. Um, as we as we talked a little bit, it um, it became a bit easier to feel like I wasn't losing my mind. Um, she just kind of like walked me sort of like through a better thought process of like um well she would like ask me th uh simple questions like how is this negatively impacting my life has my has her advice ever hurt me or things like that um and like as i started to go through some of these questions um eventually i realized that she was like a really helpful force in my life when i uh, actually listened to her and um it helped me be it helped me be a bit less reserved around her okay uh so did it freak you out at all to have like another person uh i guess in your space yeah, we definitely had to um we definitely had to work out boundaries and it's um it's a lot of conversations. I kind of like describing it as so like kind of imagine that my mind is sort of a house that we are all sort of sharing rules about who um does what chores, what things are not allowed inside the house, 
um, mm. and just how we interact with each other. And um, for the most part, I think that like everyone typically agrees pretty well with the rules. And when we don't, uh, when there are those who don't necessarily, um, we still manage to like work things out, but it requires a lot of communication. Mm. Okay. Um, did you ever try to see, and I'm sorry if any of my questions come off, it's like offensive or anything. Did you ever try to see like a professional when it first started happening? Um, I did. Unfortunately, um, my insurance didn't cover any kind of like specialist that I was capable of seeing. So oh. what I ended up having to do instead was um, I've always been kind of like research oriented. So mm -hmm. I don't really have a problem looking up different case studies, uh, different articles that people have written on the subject. Um, Although there was a while before, like, I, um, there was, like, a while before eventually we came to, like, a better terminology for things. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, I would follow some of the advice that experts had been giving their patients according to some of these um, case studies. And I also made this list of things to watch out for. And that's basically how I had to handle it. Um, I recommend, by the way, that anyone who is capable of seeing a specialist should make that attempt. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that I had no, uh, it's just I couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. That's unfortunate. Um, yeah. So, um, okay. Um, I had another question in my head. I'm just trying to remember what it was. Um, it's okay. Has it ever, has it, um, having these multiple, uh, alters, has, uh, has it ever interfered with They're like your mates. life? Oh, system mates. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, having system mates, has it ever, um, interfered with your, with your functioning in your normal life or anything like that? It kind of does. Um, there are, so there are only depending on the conditions only about two of us are capable of fronting for more than three days at a time um if we do try to f be at the front which is to say sorry so right now i'm the one who is fronting um and yesterday like tama was fronting she was the one who's handling like the majority of the responsibilities and stuff um if we front too long it starts to like be a huge drain on like our mental capacity and then it has to be like someone else who does the fronting switching used to be way harder to like manage before but eventually as we like got practice at practice at it and decided to like divvy up responsibilities because like certain people are much better at certain things than others so for instance uh when the body sort of goes nonverbal and we really struggle to talk because we have autism, um, if Ali is around, not all system mates are around at all times, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, Ali is around. She is capable of fronting during those times and talking as long as like um, in like controlled bursts, which helps us communicate when we otherwise couldn't. Write that down, write that down! And like each different member of the system has a different skill set or um, even when it comes to having conversations because we're activists, um, depending on what kind of conversations we think we're going to have for the day, we usually choose at the beginning of the day um, who's going to handle like who's going to handle what jobs, what conversations, etc. And we'll basically have that person fronting for the day. So, for instance, because today was a day that we were going to be talking about um, our experience as like a plural system. I'm the one who is better at having those conversations. Well, Tama and me are usually, Tama and I are the ones that are good at that conversation. So, um, it's usually us who will talk about that. Okay. Um, hmm. Um, 
Do you ever get into fights? Like, what's the last fight you got into? Oh, let me see. Um, it kind of depends. Uh, it depends on like how uh severe the last really bad one was um we had a conversation that no one really wanted to do so we all kind of drew straws and whoever got the short one was the one that uh got stuck doing it um that conversation was one where uh, that conversation was managed by Lilith. I don't want to say like what it was specifically. Um, but she said that if uh, she got any huge fight with us about it and said, like, if you ever make me have any kind of similar conversation to this or put me in that situation again, um, I will never talk to any of you. Uh, more recently, I think Allie snapped at one of our... Um, at one of our friends and I think eventually by the end of the conversation we kind of decided that she was it was not a good reaction but she was probably in the right um there are a lot of like because we're basically in very close quarters we have to have a lot of um a lot of conversations some of which are contentious about how each of the others behaves and like that was one example of that hmm. Have you ever had anybody like move out for an extended time? Uh kind of yeah, that was uh something that happened to me. So two really relevant terms to um plurality are endogenic and disassociative um uh, or not endogenic and traumagenic. So um when my plurality developed, it was endogenic, not in response to a particular or at least a very obvious traumatic event. Um, I had a traumatic splitting event about six years ago that ended up creating Tama and Florius, and I would have been gone until only like a few months ago where I came back. Um. Mm -hmm. Lanier has also, um, Lanier, Rin, and Audrey also. Interesting. It happens, but it's rare. Yeah. Chat, do you have any uh, questions? Oh, oh, that's a good question. Are the different, it's different systems, right? Uh, Different system mates, the system different mates. members of the systems, or okay. different members of the system. Yeah. Are they different ages? Um. Or different genders. Different genders, yes. Different ages, I don't know. Like I am at, like there's some of, there's some of the, like there's some members of the system, I guess we kind of like passively sort of view as being older, but like none of us really, um, none of us really like um, attaches ourselves to like the idea that like any of us is like a truly old or um, young or anything like that. Hmm. So I'd say that we mostly consider ourselves in like the same like age range of like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, which one is the best at doing puzzles when drunk, is what Eli has asked. <laughs> Apparently Tama. <laughs> well, actually, it might be Shailen. I don't know. I've never seen how well Shailen does puzzles drunk. This is a joke uh, on stream yesterday. Tama got really wasted because uh, we had to deal with family earlier. And mm. uh, she was solving these really, really hard fucking puzzles. Um, and even, like, pretty well won a game of chess against one of our friends. Uh, and she's like, um, Drunk Tom is undefeatable. Mm. It was a banger. That's based. Uh, chat, what other, what other uh, questions do you have? Oh, do you... Do are there different political leanings? Um, 
I suppose to some extent. I think most of us uh, probably fall onto the um, left side of the political spectrum. I think that some of us are more favorable to like, um, like mid-level authoritarian ideals. So like nothing too strong. Mm -hmm. um, most of us probably uh, lean lib left. Okay. That's cool. Um, uh, I guess. Uh, chat, chat. Do you have any questions? So all of the all of the system mates have have pretty much stayed for the most part, with the exception yeah. of okay, that's cool. Do you ever discover new system mates, or for the most part, it stayed the same? Um, there have been new members of the system. I'd say that sometimes we gain one or two more during a year, but um, also a lot of the ones that have been gained are fairly inactive, so they're not around much necessarily. Hmm. Um, well, I guess I guess by that metric, actually, Evan isn't around much, nor is Bronwyn or um, or Lilith. Beard has been less around. So, like, yeah, th different system members are varying degrees of like present. Hmm. Uh, what do you think the biggest personality difference is between like like two system mates or something? Um, I think that some of the system mates are way more, um, eccentric. Lanier is fully convinced that, um, Lanier is fully convinced that she is the queen of whatever she has decided that she is the queen of for that particular day. Um, and some of us find it very difficult to tell if she's joking. Others just completely take her, um, uh, relatively seriously. Um... I'd say that members like Cassia and Evan are probably way more serious. Bronwyn too. Um, there are a lot of members of our system, however, who are way more shit posty, and I kind of like oscillate between the two hmm. um, as well. So, like, I guess the degree to which we'll engage other people like differs. Although most of us will usually try to be um, pretty respectful pretty respectful of whoever we're talking to to the best of our capacity hmm. um so if you date somebody is everybody dating that person um no some of the more common fronters might uh join in but um not um that's not necessarily common and um it kind of like depends on how they feel about them too so like there are times where like um the person that one of us is dating uh the others feel like um a certain way about mm. okay somebody asked who fronts more uh uh and what are they like or um, i guess who mm fronts the most more recently, it's been Tom and I who front the most. Um, I'd say that um, Tom suffers from some pretty bad anxiety issues, so that's why she like um, likes to take pretty big breaks between the times where she fronts. Um, though when she's drunk, that is like gone entirely, but we also recognize that that's uh, not a healthy habit, so we don't. In it doesn't get encouraged, and we're careful about like how much that gets indulged in. Um, we're also like taking a break from drinking for a while for uh, that reason. Um, I would say that um, I actually don't know how I would describe myself, honestly. Um, I like talking to people, but for the most part, I just spend a lot of my time either writing or trying to um, uh, cook for people I like, honestly. I love cooking so much. Mm. That's nice. Um, 
How do you feel about like your condition being in the DSM? Um, realistically speaking, the DSM is kind of a um, how to put this? The DSM is a is in a lot of ways. Um, it exists sort of like as an insurance manual, as what um, what companies have to or what insurance companies have to um, help pay for and how therapists are supposed to deal with certain conditions. Um, realistically, it's a way that we treat people in general. If we see someone who is um, not necessarily with narcissistic personality disorder, but we recognize a certain like inclination towards um, narcissism will treat them differently than we might treat someone who's more altruistic. Um, I think that the DSM just kind of codifies a certain point at which we need to we need to offer treatment to certain things. And I would agree that like um, I'd agree that if I hadn't sought any kind of treatment to better manage the um, manage having DID, uh, I'd probably be a lot worse off for it. So like, I don't think that you're like mentally ill just for having something that is in the DID. I think that um, like functioning is a, what constitutes functioning is a very nuanced subject. So like, um, so like I don't consider myself as bad off as a lot of the people who need the diagnosis, even though I meet the criteria for the diagnosis. But again, that's mostly because I've gotten treatment. Mm. Um, oh, I so hope that made sense. Treatment. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. To be clear, by the way, a lot of people don't necessarily like understand this about treatment. Um, so like, it's not it's not like a delusion or anything it's just a way that um it's because it's not it's not making me see reality in ways that are like very obviously like not real so for instance um i'm not thinking that my tv is this magical device that spits out gold um that would be a delusion um, it's just, there are, from like an external perspective, there are different versions of me that you will, that's, I'm trying to say this is what it would look like from the outside. This is not like how I would describe my experience, but there are like different versions from the outside that have to like, well, that I ideally treated as separate people and interacted with as such outside um, that have, and like... Okay, I forgot the second half of what I was going to say. <laughs> um, so, like, yeah. And, like, um, treatment does not necessarily mean that, like, it goes away. It's just we're better at functioning under certain conditions. I don't think that I would be more functional without the other members of my system. I think that they have helped me function in ways that I actually used to struggle a great deal with. And like, as long as we're managing and communicating really well together, um, like, I think that overall having, um, being a plural system is a benefit to my life. Okay. Somebody asked, um, you might've said this already, but how many are in the system and when did you realize there were others? Um, there are roughly, so if we're talking about people who are comfortable fronting, there are 15. It's closer to, um, 25 if we include people who never front and have no interest in doing so. Um. Do you know all their names? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Um. So there is, um. Let me see. So we've got Ali. We've got um. Sorry, my <laughs> dizzy moment. Oh, it's um, okay. Yeah. So there's 
Ali, Audrey, Bronwyn, Cassia, Evan, Florius, Lilith, Lanier, Rin, Rowana, Shylin, um, Spirit, Tama, Yang. Did I forget anyone? That seemed over 10. I stopped counting, <laughs> so... <laughs> um... But, uh, yeah, it seemed, it seemed over, over 10, at least, yeah. you know? So, um... Uh, uh... Any other questions, chat? I guess. Um, oh! Uh, what is the pettiest argument you've gotten into with, like, a system mate? Let's see... What is the pettiest argument I have gotten into? Yeah. I think Rin and I often get into arguments, actually, about um, about our views on others. I think that Rin has a, Rin has a great dis deal more misanthropy than I do. So, like, we are constantly um, arguing and sometimes even taking going as far to take shots at each other for um because i believe that that is um incredibly unhealthy unproductive and um keeps her from like getting along with other people in our life that she might really enjoy otherwise um so we get into a lot of we get into some spats over that okay um somebody submitted a super chat to ask how does Haru expect society to engage with them in their system? Um, in general, um, so if we're talking about broader society and not like specific and private friend groups, so like people who I consider close to me, um, I would like to, um, I would like people to just um acknowledge our gender identity as female there are some male members of the system but a lot of them are like gender apathetic even so they don't necessarily like care one way or the other um which makes transition way easier because holy fuck if that ended up being a fight um but in general if other people can uh, correctly gender us will usually give um, will usually represent ourselves as like Tama or Haru specifically um, as a collective if we don't necessarily uh, want to open it up about being plural because um, or or as whoever is most likely to be fronting whenever someone talks to that person so like we don't necessarily expect them to learn our names uh, learn all of our names and if we did we would probably be using like or if we were going to be willing to ask that uh we've considered using like little um necklaces or bracelets uh to signal who's fronting so like the bracelet or necklace will have our name on it and like little beads um so that you can read and understand who you're talking to i don't necessarily expect most people to get to know us or to care although it is a it is an accommodation that I greatly appreciate um, if our friends are willing to make. Okay. Um, how do you process with the stigma surrounding your experience? Um, people are gonna people are going to disagree. Like some of our favorite streamers are even like um, on the fence as to whether DID exists and usually say that uh, there's just not enough to support it. Um, realistically, you don't have to believe us. We believe us. Uh, we're pretty functional. I don't think that like, um, I don't think that we're really like struggling in society. Um, I prefer, um, I don't necessarily like to see like other plurals getting flack, but in general, um, we are pretty good when people don't like acknowledge our identity or even our gender. Um, typically, um, it's just other people 
don't necessarily want to know you. And like, I kind of understand that there have been certain times on Twitter where I'm responding or one of us are responding to something that someone said. And like, we don't want to go to that person's profile, look up every detail about them, know their gender identity, know everything about them. We just want to respond yeah. to like what's being said. And realistically, um, unless someone is going to be in a position where they're like working above us at, where they're like some kind of manager, uh, we don't need that many accommodations from them. And we try to pick like the ones that, um, that see to us being like mentally and emotionally healthy. And like, uh, we just don't care about the average person enough to need them to like even acknowledge our name. Okay. Um, uh, Brian in the chat asks, how does a conversation or disagreement between system mates present? Is it verbal or mostly internal? Uh, sometimes it can be both. Um, it's mostly internal, though. Okay. Uh, typically, we'll try to... Um, so, like, it's worth acknowledging that, like, kind of try to imagine us as, like, maybe... Um, maybe like five people walk in and they're all part of like a close group. Obviously the five people don't necessarily want to be arguing in a public place. So we try to, um, we try to move what, uh, we try to move ourselves to a situation where we can just argue amongst ourselves, um, in private. And then like, so that we can like focus entirely on what we're saying. Cause like you wouldn't, I, I imagine that you might, um struggle if you were arguing with someone who's only half paying attention mm -hmm. um so we try to just make sure that we're in a private place that we're listening into and hearing each other out um sometimes if we feel that there is um sometimes we feel if the, if we feel that there's not a good um consensus being reached um Myself, Cassia, Shailin, uh, Tama, and Audrey are usually good mediators for whatever conflicts tend to arise. So we'll take, so anyone who is fighting will typically, if they can't resolve it on their own, take it to one of the mediators and both sides present their case. And like, um, they kind of like come to a decision based on like what they hear. Um, it's very hard because we like uh, live in close quarters. So we have to sort of, um, we have to be very on top of like arguments. We don't like to let things simmer or faster. We like to work yeah. things out to the best of our ability as soon as possible. Yeah, um, I guess there's one last question here. What is something you wish people knew about your experience that they often misrepresent? Um, I think that, a lot of people think that when it comes to plurality, a lot of people are that like um, people are just looking for some excuse to like justify that like um, their headmate is like Jesus, and then he and because and you you either like acknowledge um, you all either acknowledge him as the uh, son of God and have to follow what he says, or you're like um, ableist. I think that like a lot of people kind of get the idea that DID is that or DID is there used to be this video where like this one person um did at least like five to ten switches and over the course of like um over the course of a shopping trip and sometimes i imagine that might happen i don't know but um for the most part i think that if you meet a person um who is like full-on plural with the id um, you're not usually going to recognize them. You're probably just going to spot them, think that they seem normal. And like, unless some exacerbating event happens, uh, you'll be none the wiser, which is kind of like what makes, I don't necessarily want to say mental illness because it's not always that for the people, but it's what makes some of these, um, some of these conditions difficult is that like, um, you only see the narcissist or the sociopath, for instance, who decided to kill a bunch of people. Um, but like a lot of sociopaths that I've known, um, who meet the criteria for sociopathy, don't, 
um, don't actually show it very well and are some of the most principled people that I know. They actually have a lot of virtues that I don't see in the average person. And like, I think that we only see some of these conditions when like they get to the really bad or really, um, really unmoderated um, point. And I just wish that like most people realized that with most um, most conditions that like most of us are normal, most of us are functional, most of us aren't like what you see on Twitter or on Twitch uh, or on TikTok. A lot of us are just um, a lot of us are just uh, nine to five workers, honestly. Hmm. Um. Let's see here. Do movies like Split contribute to a productive discourse or further people's misconceptions? I've never seen. Uh, never seen the movie Split. Have you seen it? Uh, no, but I've seen a few ones that I don't think represented plurality well. Um, somebody asked. I think that. Hmm? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I think that um, there are some, there are a lot of forms of media that I've seen that um, that I think represent the issue poorly. But the problem is, um, so like there was this movie where there was this, um, I think there was a serial killer who was a plural system and they were not uh, doing well. And like, so there were some things about it that were kind of like accurately represented, but like, um, I think that good representation is complicated. And then honestly, the main reason that we get as bad about good representation is that there's not a lot of representation overall. So like one bit of representation is almost viewed as if it's like 100 bits of representation mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. just by the fact that like it's so scarce and i think that we just need more of it i think that like um like one of the more interesting things that i've seen said in feminist circles is that we need movies where it's okay for a woman to be a b villain the an evil one and a deeply flawed or even um or even like delusional person it doesn't necessarily mean that all women are and it doesn't have to play on any kinds of like stereotypes of women being any of these things but like it needs to be that women can um women can be the villain women can be the hero women can be fallible etc i think that's more of our issue and that everyone just kind of um I think that people don't realize that, like, that's the actual issue, not that, like, one bit of representation is bad. It's it's that you're thinking that one bit of representation is ever going to, like, be capable of encapsulating all the different things that can be DID. Hmm. Somebody asked, what are Haru's favorite books or movies? Uh, one of my favorite favorite books was the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy it was um if you've ever if you've ever watched the movie the book is fantastic um what was my favorite movie um god it has been so long i think i loved the persona 3 movie honestly um also I find Enola Holmes, both of those movies, to be pretty fun. Pretty much the Sherlock uh, Holmes series in general and its movies have been, like, really fun to watch. I am a sucker for, like, old literature. I just love studying writing. Okay. Um, uh, what about Tama's favorite books and movies? Hmm. Um, I think she really enjoyed the Dresden Files. Um, uh, if you've ever heard that book series, it's really good. I recommend it. Um, Tama likes eating up on I oh, in Magica that was one of her favorites. She was like, um, she was going on about loving that one. Um, as 
for movies, what was? Um, I think she liked a lot of the Pokemon movies and I think there was a Lupin the third movie. I can't remember which one, what it was called though. Have any of the system mates entered relationships with each other? Um, yeah, Spirit and Lilith, Evan and Bronwyn, um, Shylin and Yang. Okay, yeah, uh, interesting. Um, thank you so much for the Rachel logic. Hmm, I don't know that I have any other questions. Um, chat, if you have any further questions, let me know. Um, but it's been pretty interesting. I'm sure I'll have more come up over time. Absolutely, we can do this yeah. again if you'd ever like. Um, sure, yeah. Oh, why is it a manager, not a person? Is what somebody's oh. asking. Why is it a manager, not a person? Yeah. Oh, why would I like expect certain accommodations made from a manager that I wouldn't expect from a person? Maybe. Um, I would say because the manager is probably someone who we're going to be interacting with uh, more often than a person. So, for instance, I don't necessarily need my... Um, I don't need... Um, to call me Haru, like as long as we're going by uh, some shared na shared name that we've like agreed on to present to a person, mm -hmm. um, that's fine. But like, if it, if it's just going to be like some kind of uh, one off reaction and not something that I'm going to have to deal with on a more long term basis, I just don't necessarily um, care. Even if that person's like, um, even if that person's being uh, sexist or transphobic to me, I also don't necessarily care about that because. Um, realistically like this is probably just going to be the last that i see or interact with them so like it doesn't really matter that much but like if it if we're talking about um if we're talking about a job that i go to on a daily basis um i'm gonna want them to acknowledge more things about me especially um especially because to some extent of the um power dynamic that exists there okay well um, I think that's it, Haru. Um, if you don't mind, um, uh, I think that that um, maybe we'll like revisit this conversation. I'm gonna be real with you. I pre-gamed a little bit, so I have some alcohol in my system, and I can't think up of any <laughs> many further good questions right now. Um, but... You can totally relate. Yeah. Although not today for me. Okay. Yeah. No. My uh, my one of my relatives was over and. And uh, and we went and we pre-gamed a little bit. So, um, but do you have any plans for New Year's or? Uh, honestly, I'm just gonna spend some time with the friends I love the best. Um, I usually spend mornings uh when I can on certain days with um the people that we generally get along well with and like, and we try to stream later on, uh, because we're still trying to like build up an audience and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Can I shout out your channel? Absolutely. I would really appreciate that. Okay. What's your channel? Uh, Fauna of Flora. Fauna of Flora, right? Or is it just Fauna yeah. Flora? Fauna of Flora. Okay. Awesome. Uh, I could also give a quick advert, too. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Hi. I am Haru of the Florin system. Uh, otherwise known as Fauna of Flora, Fauna of F on Twitter. Um, in general, one thing that we're trying to bring is we're trying to bring conversations about um, trans topics and various marginalized identities besides just that. Um, too light. We are our goal is to talk to people with uh, different experiences, especially ones that we ourselves do not have. Um, and as well, we like to weigh in on political topics. The one thing that we would love to introduce to this space, besides a greater concern in general for a person's thought process, is the idea that it is better to come to the wrong answer through a good thought process than the correct answer through a bad thought process. Um, okay. 
ideally we are thinking our ideas really well through and that doesn't always bring us to the right answer but it brings us to the right answer um as much um more than having a bad thought process where we're only getting lucky yeah and that's kind of like what we try to talk about based okay well um thanks for joining me um have a great day i'll talk to you later you too talk to you later uh hit me up in dms anytime okay sure thing bye